Hey everyone, you are watching 100GB and welcome to the channel. So this is part two of the Wise Android hard video. If you haven't seen part one, the link should be in the description or it should be flashing here. Just go and check that out first. And you've already watched part one. Welcome back again and let's roll the intro. So how to approach Android app development? Well, the good news here is that almost all the things that we talked about in the last section have in some form been addressed by the Android team. Let's do a quick rundown and see what can we do about those. So we talked about one time setup, like we know that we have to set up emulator and a device along with the installation of the studio. Now that has changed with Compose. Uh, now you can actually try out the UI on your device or like on your PC itself. Then for the feedback loop, yes, we know that the Android builds take a lot of time. So we have a hot reload in Compose which actually speeds it up like hot reload from android wasn't very reliable a few years back it is in a decent shape as of today uh, for crashes we actually uh, i don't think we we have done anything there now the fragmentation problem is being addressed by very nice android x apis so yeah, mostly the apis for large screens and activity embedding really help there for the offline access we have work manager which actually does a lot of heavy lifting so you don't have to do it yourself then multi-threading and life cycle issue well kotlin coroutines were actually built just to handle these like this was one of the core motivations behind Kotlin core routines they implicitly handle the life cycle and things remain fine there are no memory leaks as a developer you kind of get a single threaded environment it's not still single threaded because if your suspend function runs on a different dispatcher it effectively means a different thread as far as the experience is concerned it's more or less single threaded so how do you approach uh, like learning android app development today so if you're a college grad well the first thing that i would say that you should check out this video that i created last year most of the bits in that video are still relevant today and the next thing i'd, I'd say is just take a step back and try to think through whether you should really uh, learn native Android and iOS or you should maybe go the cross-platform way. If your end goal is to like just build an application maybe for yourself or for a startup then it does make sense to just explore Flutter or React.js if provided that you are building stuff from the scratch it'll really be a great decision because you will be able to use the same code and launch the same application on iOS with minimal work. Now if for some reason you love native Android or native iOS development, let's say if you're eyeing a particular job which has this requirement, then learning native does make some sense. So what do you do there? I'd say just, just try to learn the latest and greatest. Like if you talk about Android, just use whatever latest technologies that are available. Use the latest Android Studio version. Use the latest Kotlin version. Use coroutines, flows, channels. Use Jetpack Compose. Uh, basically just stay on the latest stuff. The problem is that even if you stay on the latest stuff, maybe within the next two, three years, even that changes. If you're still staying with something that came around four or five years back, uh, that's a bigger problem. But then the problem with the living on the latest stuff is that you'll come across a lot of tutorials, uh, which will be obsolete. You will come across a lot of help uh, articles, which will also be obsolete. You need to be beware of those. Now, there is this sweet spot as well which uh, which I really recommend today is you should start learning KMM, which is Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile. The best part about, about this is that you still use Kotlin language to write application and UI code. And that code runs across all the platforms like Android, iOS, web and whatnot. And not only that, you also have uh, Compose Multi-Platform, which is basically kind of like Jetpack Compose, but it works in, in this multi-platform mobile world. So I see it as a sweet spot where you get that touch of native, but you, what you're doing is actually cross-platform. All right, so if you ask me, Gaurav, what's the way forward now? Well, I'll, I'll say that instead of focusing on the languages only, it's a good time that we should start focusing on the concepts as well. Let's try to think through and maybe take a few examples uh, of what I mean. If you're a web developer, you know JavaScript and TypeScript, it's worth spending some time to understand what are the differences between the statically typed languages and the dynamically typed languages and which one are you using and why are you using it or why the thing was built in this way. So that in the future, if you need to jump on the maybe the dynamically typed language, it's easier for you. So the other example that I have is Let's say you are an Android developer who is using Java and XML 
and using java and xml you are basically uh, doing the ui in an imperative way which is also very synonymous to how we use jquery on the web how we use objective c along with the ui view controllers in uh, in ios it's worth spending some time to understand the other side of the story which is the declarative uis and understand why do we have declarative uis where are they helping uh, what benefits you'll get out of like going down that path now when i say declarative uis i mean react js for web uh, flutter for almost all the platforms jetpack compose for android then swift ui for ios and another great example i have is so let's say you are a backend guy and you're writing rest apis for your server or maybe you are working on the client side and you're using those apis in your client code like instead of just relying on that http based uh, communication it's worth spending some time on understanding what are the various forms of communications that you have like when you in want to interact between machines there could be certain different types of uh, communication formats like one is this one shot communication where you use http now http further can either be in the rpc form or it can be in the rest api form the rest api mostly uses json rpc can use json or it, it can be grpc based which means and grpc uh, it has its own like wire format and whatnot if it's not a one shot communication maybe it's a real time communication then you have multiple options either web sockets which are supported across the board either server send events which are quite archaic now or, or some pub sub mechanism or maybe you use udp for uh, like for implementing web rtc uh, so web rtc is something which is used for like uh, streaming mostly media because you can live with the packet loss there or maybe you need a message queue kind of communication when you need to communicate between different servers uh, then you go down that kafka path or maybe you need a push notification because hey you need to communicate uh, between the client device and the server and since you want to save battery and whatnot do you actually don't want to end up having a web socket then maybe you cannot even have a web socket on, on the client device and that's where you use uh, Firebase cloud messaging or Apple push notifications. So you see where I'm going with all of this. You have this big tree. You need to like uh, completely understand at least one or two parts, which means that you need to at least do one or two DFS, but you still should understand the entire breadth of the tree so that you can make wiser decisions. Let's see. At the end of the day, what matters is these concepts. The technologies will just keep coming in and going out and only the concepts will stay with you. And uh, I think this is actually time to remind you guys that this kind of videos, uh, this kind of content actually takes a lot of time and effort and money as well. So I would really uh, like encourage you guys to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and actually share this video with someone who you think will get really nice help from this video. And with that, I think it's time to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.